What's going on? I'm John, and recently I just finished writing the rewrites for my epic fantasy novel. I'm super excited to have done so, but throughout this process, there was one thing that bugged me over and over again. So many things in my story don't have names. For example, while I was writing the backstory for Vermana, I had to write passages like this. Why not? TK Large Boy looked over the two remaining choices. It's only fair. TK Large Boy pointed to TK Skinny Boy and said, TK Skinny Boy. Oh, come on. TK Large's boy complained. I made my choice, TK Large Boy said. TK curse word. TK Large Boy scowled. Or largest boy scowled. I can't even read it. That's how many freaking TKs there are in there. So much templating makes it harder to read, harder to understand, and frankly, I'm just tired of that stuff being there. So in this video, I'm going to go through and I'm going to be naming all of this stuff that I didn't name previously. And because I'm supposed to start outlining the sequel to this novel on September 1st, I need to finish this naming in just two days. To start off this intense process, first I'm going to go through all 462 pages of my epic fantasy novel of the Word document, and I'm going to find every single TK, and I'm going to create a nice long list of them. So let's just get started. <laughs> I figured out all the different things that I'm going to have to replace. But the first thing that I want to do here with them is sort them into categories because some of them are people that I need to name. Some of them are actual places that I need to name. And a lot of them are things. And also some of them are curse words that I need to name. Those are the main categories of things that I need to start naming. And I'm going to go through and sort them. And once I have them all sorted, then I can start going through and systematically naming all of them. So now I've sorted all of these placeholders into their categories, whether they're people, places, curse words, or things. Now that that's done, I'm actually ready to start going through and starting to name some of these things. But I did not anticipate just how many things I was going to have to name. I have 19 people to name, 23 places, seven different types of curse words, and potentially some of them will be different for different cultures. And to top it all off, I have 41 different things that I have to name. And these are all of a place from books to ranks in a certain hierarchy like a university, to all manner of thing like a poisonous plant or a certain potion. So because there are so many different things that I need to name and I think things is going to be the most difficult category, on this first day here I'm going to focus on the other three categories. Curse words, people, and places. So let's just start with curse words since that's the shortest one and potentially the most complicated with different cultures included and all of that stuff. And the way that I'm going to document these curse words is I'm going to use this little world building guide that I created. As you can see, I already had some place for languages. However, this little topic isn't even filled out at all. So I'm going to include the curse word stuff in here and just get started on filling this out and trying to figure out these details. As I'm looking at some of these curse words, I'm realizing that some of them are relatively rare. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and see how many occurrences they have in the actual writing. And if it only has like one occurrence or maybe two or some sort of really low number, then I think I'm going to swap them out for one of the more common ones. So I'm not spending so much time on creating all these random curse words that are not going to be used that often. Okay, so I figured out all of the curse words. There's only three really, and they vary based on the cultures of the three main characters. Pramana is from a place called Tanafayu. There's only two in his language. Ella is from a place called Megayakti. All three of them exist in that language. <laughs> and for Lucian, there are two different curse words. But the thing is, because Megayakti and Mariradu are so similar to each other because those two countries are bordering and they've been allies throughout history. They actually ended up kind of inheriting each of the words from each other. Originally I did have them look a little bit similar. I tried to make them look a little similar but I didn't actually have them be the same and I decided that I was going to actually make them the same because I want to simplify things for the readers, of course, and if I'm adding like a million different curse words, they have to learn a different language, basically, then I'm just making it a little too difficult. Personally, I don't want to add on that much complexity for something as simple as a few curse words, so I'm just keeping the ones in the two countries that are very similar to each other, that are bordering each other, more similar. 
The ones from Tanafayu, those are going to be pretty different because they're in a different continent across an ocean, and the culture there is going to be different from the one of these other two countries. That's three things figured out, and next I'm going to move on to what should we do first, people or places? I don't even know. Uh, I'll just do places. So next I'm going to work on naming places, and I'll store these names in Plotter since I already have a bunch of place names there. So let's just get started on figuring out some of these names. Okay, so I've named a few of the places here, but there's still quite a few left to go. However, it's already 9.51 and I have a run today, so I am going to be running six miles and we'll see how it feels. I actually took last week pretty chill to see if my knees would be able to recover and feel better. I'm trying to start with a little bit of a lower amount. If I went by the schedule, I would have done about 7.5 miles for the day. So I'm bumping it back to see if I can take care of my legs and have them actually be able to handle the normal amount of distance. So I'm going to go do that run and I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break and then I'll be back to continue naming these places and also naming some people. So I am back from my relatively long break. I did a lot of reading, I did a lot of running of course, and a little bit of eating I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna get back into the actual naming. I still have a decent amount of things to name as far as places are concerned, and then after that I have 19 people to name. Okay, so I have named all of these places and I've marked all of them with the rewrite tag because what I'm planning on doing is just going through one by one and renaming all of them based on their TK name in the actual text. But I'm going to rename all of those things at once once I figure out people and places. And before we can actually do that, we've got to start naming some people. Okay, so I've now gone through and I've named all sorts of people. And even though I was planning on changing all of the locations where these various people and places were in the story, I am not sure I want to do it quite yet. Really, it's a reason of time. I think that it's actually going to take a decent amount of time to do it, and I'm not sure that I actually have the time today. It's already 2.55, and I still need to do some editing and squeeze in three full hours of Japanese. So... I don't know if I have enough time really to work on that as well. This is a little bit wishful thinking. Hopefully I have some time tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be naming a lot of random stuff, so some of it might be easier and some of it might be harder. But overall there should be fewer names than I had to deal with today. So that's where I'm going to leave it off for the day. I've named a lot of places and a lot of people as well. 40 something things in total. And I've also come up with a bunch of different curse words across cultures that I'm going to be subbing out in the future as well. So yesterday I left off after finishing up the people, places, and curse words, and now I'm going into things. I've got 41 different pretty much random things that I have to figure out what their names actually are. And I don't exactly know how I'm going to organize these things yet because I'm not going to be able to put them in Plotter. There's really not any space that makes sense for that. I also don't know if I could put them in my world building sort of guide. I could make a glossary I guess but I don't know how useful that would be. Anyway I'll figure out somewhere to store them but for now I'm going to focus on actually coming up with some of these names. I decided I was going to make a glossary of all of these terms and some of them might make sense to have their own page. For instance, like these different duelist ranks might make sense to have their own page. And also you can see that what I did was I sorted all of these based on the language that the term is probably going to be in. I might move some of these over to translated terms to be in English just so it's easier to understand what they are from the name. I'm going to try to keep them named based on the culture that they came from. So that's going to impact the language that I use to actually name the various terms. And depending on how complicated the term is or how easy I want to make it for people to be able to understand what it means, I may or may not change some more of these over to English terms so that people can get an immediate grasp of what it actually is. Okay, so I've gotten a good start in the naming. I've worked my way all the way up to the Terme terms. So I have those, the Radu ones, 
Promoshi and Duelish left. Okay, so I've already finished naming all of the terms except the Karmoshi terms and the Duelish ones. Oh yeah, some of these are not actually used in the store yet, for instance, like I don't have our term of respect used to address the Emperor yet. So I just created that like in advance, you know, because I'm already creating the one for the Empress. So I might as well create that one too. And then I figured I might as well create the one for Lord and Lady too, because I didn't really want to use Lord and Lady. I feel like those are a little bit overdone. So I created my own for those as well. Let's continue with some more naming. That was just a little detail that I thought might be interesting to share. Okay, so I officially finished naming every single term here in my little glossary. My battery is also really low. <laughs> so now that I've finished actually naming all of these terms, it's time to go into the story and make the replacements, put them all in, and potentially add a little bit of description if the name in of itself doesn't describe exactly what it is. I would like to keep the description very short, obviously. I don't want to slow things down too much, so just a sentence or a few words to really get the point across is all I'm going to try and add. I'm gonna go and plug my computer in so it doesn't die on me, and let's just get started on plugging these into the actual story. Okay, so it is 10.07 and I have gotten to the point where I only have three things left. Two of them are dates, so one of them is like a year and one of them is a specific number of days and I need to figure out the timing of the story a little bit better before I can actually do those. I need to get these three different characters arcs weaved together and I have to figure out what the timing is when I'm doing that. So I don't want to put the dates or years or anything like that in yet. And then one of them is just like a description that I want to add later, but I just put like a placeholder for it because I don't know what it's going to look like yet. But anyway, those things I'm not too concerned with. Those are not major things that I need to do. Those are little things I can touch up. I have just finished going through and naming all of them. My God, that took a long time. <laughs> that was two hours of me just going through Word and just slowly but surely naming and naming and naming and naming and trying to replace things and finally i finished i'm very happy to have finished with all this naming because just frankly seeing this over and over again made the writing seem so much less finished and it was very clunky at some parts like i mentioned earlier and although this process was definitely not easy and definitely not the most fun process at all times and even though it's going to take me a little bit of time to learn some of these names and get used to them especially with characters in pramana's arc I'm really happy to have actually taken the time to figure out these names. And that actually leads me to the most important lesson for this week. If possible, don't save your naming for later because it's so much easier to learn the names the first time and type them all out the first time rather than having to go through and search like 60, 70 instances of a single name and make sure that it's being replaced correctly for all of those locations. For instance, there was one character and I didn't stop to film this because frankly, I just wanted to deal with the problem. <laughs> the TK that I created for this person's name wasn't really that unique. So I had to go and replace for different character combinations to make sure that I was getting this name only. One of them was TK hyphen B space. And I accidentally replaced that with his name, but without the space. So I had to go through and add the space to, I don't know, 50 instances where it was merged with another word because of that. Those sorts of things can happen when you're doing replacing in Word, especially if you replace nearly 100 different names in Word at once. And I think that the more you can limit those sorts of replacements, especially really bulk ones like you're going to have when you have a character whose name is used multiple times over and over and over again, it's better to just get that name in there the first time. So if at all possible, name your characters before you write, or don't, experiment with it yourself and see if you like doing this replacement method more than naming them in advance. And I'm curious, how do you go about naming your characters? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button so that YouTube knows to share with other writers like you. And if you wanna see more of my process for naming, especially with regard to countries and continents and all those geographical features and that sort of stuff, then make sure to check out this video next. Thanks for watching. 
I'll see you next time. I'm surprised how fast I finished this today, honestly. <laughs> Just transitioning from my weird dance to that. Um, I don't even know if that could qualify as a dance, to be honest, but you know. Anyway, peace.